On today's show, we're going to break down some of the breaking news, but more importantly, it's Maka Laka Ding Dong time. Nay, Super Maka Laka Ding Dong. Me versus Jason, head to head. A Super Flex mock draft taking place on the Sleeper app. Remember to, to subscribe to the channel. Please like the video, tell your friends, and enjoy. Once I lost so badly in my fantasy football league that I had to eat an entire can of dog food covered in wasabi. It was unpleasant. But now I found the fantasy footballer's element draft kit. The days of dog food are gone as I dig into their breakouts, values, tiered rankings, and much more. If you want to join me in the winner's circle where you don't have to paint your butt cheeks like an elephant's face, Head over to www.alimentdraftkit.com and prepare for your fancy draft. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the podcast. That's the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, if you're nasty. Oh, I'm nasty. Let's go. I know this podcast is the Fantasy Footballers. Thank you for addressing it properly then, nasty man. That's right. That's what they call me. (laughs) Yeah, Jason the Nasty Man more. I am Mike, the Fantasy Hitman, right? Andy is on break. He is celebrating his wedding anniversary right now, so he will be out the rest of the week. But that doesn't matter because the two best friends in the... the... two best friends have a bear in the house. Oh, yes. Cardboard bear extraordinaire. Jay Grizz is in the house. (laughs) He's back. He's He's looking refreshed, actually. I don't know if people had seen Jay Grizz recently. He was looking a little haggard. Uh quarantine didn't treat him well i guess not enough fish he's a little you know rough around the edges but he looks great yeah you are looking good jay not a not a day over three years old i don't know when when does a bear look good (laughs) i don't know how old do bears do bears live to be like 30 if you told me if you told me a bear like uh, uh, a full lifespan for a bear is 30 or you told me a full lifespan for a bear is 90 right i would totally believe either one I have no... Brooks, how old is a bear? How, or how old do bears go? I couldn't tell you. <laughs> how old, how bears old do bears go? Bears go? go I'm, I'm trying to say. find something on the on the, sure. on the the drop board over here. How old do bears and go? And you stop talking. I need help. I'm not sure, but Jay Grizz will never die. So, Well, that is one of the benefits of being you know, cardboard and not actually real. Uh, on today's show, we're going to do some buy, sell, and buy popular demand, mostly from Brooks. We are doing a mock draft, but not just a mock draft, Jason. Mm-hmm. Why don't you tell everyone what's so special about this particular oh, mock draft? Oh, well, we, we've had we've had a vocal minority ask for this a lot, and it's been a couple years. We've done this before, but uh, Superflex is obviously more and more common, and we are, we are nothing if not men of the people, and so we are doing a head-to-head super flex mock draft me versus mike uh i believe we did this the last time we not a super flex draft but we did a head-to-head mock um that was a blast i dominated and uh expect to do the same again today uh you you did i think you bested me on that one what one and oh but uh you know that's just a battle we gotta fight the war now Make sure you follow the show. If you want to watch youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers click that subscribe Click the like, click the bell. I don't know. There's a bunch of stuff you got to click over there on YouTube. And make sure you click all of that. Follow us on our socials. I am at FF Hitman. You can find the nasty one <laughs> at Jason FFL. Andy is at Andy Holloway. And we are at the FF Ballers. Our handles are the same on Instagram for the personals. But the show is Instagram.com slash fantasy footballers. Jason, let's talk about... A running back. You brought him up before the show started, and you didn't even know that we were going to talk about him. That's true. Buy or Sell, presented by Pristine Auction. 
Buy or sell time. Colts running back Jonathan Taylor. Will he see 300 touches in 2021 for a 17-game pace? That's about 17.5 touches per game. Right now, Andy has him the highest at running back four. He's got JT Fever. I have met running back nine, Jason, running back ten, unless you have made some adjustments like you were talking about doing. But buy or sell 300 touches – which is a lot. That is a lot. To give a frame of reference, over the last five years, there's been 31 backs who've had 300 touches, and 61% of those in the season as a top five back. Now, that statistic will change a little bit because of the extra game. Right. Um, possible to have 300 touches and not necessarily be uh, ahead of the rest of the league by the same degree, but I'm, I'm absolutely buying the 300 touches. I have him right now statted for 300 and 20 touches and yes I did I brought him up before the show I did not know we were going to be discussing him and uh, in prep in preparing for this show uh, I did a mock draft where I drafted Jonathan Taylor with my first pick and it was the first time I've really done that this year because I haven't been that high on him and I am changing my tune I, I I'm realizing and remembering just how doggone good he is he's very good I mean coming out you and I were like Yes. Soups hot and bothered coming yes. out of college. We're like, this guy is uh, – the the fact that he wasn't a top 10, top 15 NFL draft, he wasn't even a first rounder. And I cursed the Kansas City Chiefs for drafting Clyde Edwards-Alaire over him. Yeah, dummies. Um, <laughs> Not that he's bad, but like then I didn't – so I ended up taking Clyde in our dynasty draft, even though I much prefer Jonathan Taylor's talent. Yeah, my point is the talent there and the change they made last way uh, last year about halfway through the season uh, allowing him to run more to his style coming into year 2. I am not worried about Marlon Mack, the Achilles is a death knell for uh running backs. So I I think Jonathan Taylor is going to be great. I'm rising on him significantly right now and I do I do buy the 300 touches and what's exciting about it to me is he is a newborn baby. He is a youngin in the NFL. And those are the guys where when they hit, when they just, yeah. when they explode, uh, it's always in that 22, 23, 24 year old range. It's not that second contract. And so you got to take your shot. You got to say, I think he has the chance to win me a league and you could be wrong, but you, this is the only time you're going to be able to buy him at the back of the first. I have my projections for Jonathan Taylor and it just so happened when I add up his receptions and carries, he is just at 300. So I will sell. Oh, you got to push. You got. You Can I push? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's gonna in exactly. Is that allowed? Yes, apps. I'll allow it because that's a terrible bet. <laughs> you you literally only get one number. <laughs> that you can be right on, so I will 100% Yeah, but allow imagine that, the glory. Oh, that would be, I mean, look, if you said he's only getting 300, and then he gets 300. That's like hitting your number on the roulette table. That's the hitman right there. Uh, I'm going to sell. I I like Jonathan Taylor. I think he's worth the first round pick. I have my concerns about how the team will use Naeem Hines still, and the will the targets, will those checkdowns that he gets for, or that he received from, from uh, P. River, old Philip Rivers, will he see that same type of a target share on a weekly basis from Carson Wentz? That remains to be seen. But he is certainly one of those running backs. If you call your shot, Jonathan Taylor finishing as a top three running back would not surprise me in in the least. Would it surprise you? No, if he not, made it there? not at all. He's He is an absolute stud. And if they truly give him the bell cow role, he's going to dominate. And like you said, we're, we're talking about this 300 touch mark because of – you said it, but I want to reiterate it. Running backs that see that volume, they end up in the top five. That's – it's just there. That's why we always say follow, follow volume in fantasy football. That's why I'm so high on Najee Harris because even if the team is inefficient and the offensive line is not great, he's going to see an incredible workload and will just power his way – into being a, a superstar running back one. That was buy or sell from Pristine Auction, pristineauction.com. Use the registration code BALLERS to get a $10 credit. Pristine Auction is the best sports memorabilia site in the known universe, probably the multiverse. I would assume that in all – I would assume if you go 
uh, you know, a million, a billion different universes out yeah. there. They're probably the best in all of them. What do we got? On, we, oh, Devonta Adams is still up on the wall. Brooks, a little bit lazy there, Brooks. A little bit lazy. Just still celebrating. News and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. I apologize for cutting you off, Brooks. I didn't know you were going to talk. No problem. Usually, it's usually a good bet that he's going to be silent. Yeah, that's why I went with it and I lost. Yeah. Goodness, uh, Packers. Aaron Rodgers. It was. It happened. You already know this, so we're just letting you know. You know, we're just talking about it again. He showed up. Yeah, it's great. It's he great. He is news. the quarterback for the the Packers, but that means I got a snake, man. Oh, so sad. Blake Bortles uh, released. He. I thought for sure he was going to be the starter. Um. You know, and, and do great things, but he had a chance. Then, then it turned out he was Blake Bortles. The more interesting part, which is crazy because of how insane the whole situation was with Aaron Rodgers over the offseason, to me, now the most interesting part is a tweet came out from Trey Wingo when after uh, Rodgers had showed up that said part of this was that he told the team he wants Randall Cobb back. Randall Cobb. I mean, look, he wants him back, and it was like this. This is an insane trade rumor that Randall Cobb is going to be back. Lo and behold, Randall Cobb is going to the Green Bay Packers. He's he going home. He escapes the clutches of the Houston Texans, who are doing some really weird stuff down there with uh, the Deshaun Watson situation. I don't know if you've been following that. Yeah, They're like having him play other positions. What do you? What are you doing? Uh, uh, but anyway, we're not going to talk about that. Randall Cobb is back, Jason. Fantasy value. Um, it is possible that he does have fantasy value there. I think that you know making that move and and tying him to Aaron Rodgers says that I think he's going to be on the field. I think he's going to be the wide receiver too. You know, in the press conference, um, Aaron Rodgers talked about how how upset he was that they cut Jake Kumaro, um, who he said was the second best wide receiver in camp last year. So. Um, I, I think he thinks they need a two, and so, yeah, it's great 31-year-old Randall Cobb. Oh, Aaron Rodgers is not going to get up in arms about age. He's proving that age doesn't matter. In fact, in his press coverage, he said he's now waiting for them to bring back Jordy Nelson. <laughs> so, uh, TBD on that one. It, it is TBD. Uh, the last time we saw Randall Cobb really be a fantasy force was 2014. When he was the wide receiver seven, I'll be fair to him. He was the wide receiver twenty six in two thousand fifteen. That was a long time ago. That was a long time ago. But on the field, he didn't look bad. To no, me he looked last all right. Year. So I, I think he'll be fine. More than likely, he is irrelevant. But it's it's good for Aaron Rodgers. The Washington Football Team extended breakout tight end Logan Thomas. They gave him a new three year deal. Are we have been. Fading Logan Thomas for fantasy football have been out. You know, he was so necessary to that offense last year, and now the team has multiple options. Are we too low on Logan Thomas, knowing now that the team has, is committed to him being their starting tight end for the future? I, I don't think we're too low on him. I mean, it, you know, we talk negatively about his regression, the fact that, you know, the, the targets that just had to be his last year are not going to be, assuming that Curtis Samuel gets healthy and gets – uh, back on the field, I you know, but while that's our our you know our verbiage, he he's my tight end eleven. I, I you know he is not crushed to me. He's not a guy that I wouldn't draft. Um, but it is it is. Um, do you think that he can get back to being the tight end five though? Because drafting a player that you're projecting to be the tight end eleven is not good. not exciting. No, it is certainly not exciting. And no, I don't think he can get back to the tight end five. I don't. I don't see that okay, in the his volume range of outcomes. Washington has placed Curtis Samuel on the active pup list. It is a groin issue that has been lingering since minicamp. Probably nothing, but we are at the time when you need to start paying attention to that stuff. This is eight weeks. We're going on eight weeks of this injury. That is not good. I mean, if that was in season, you're out half the year. So. Uh, hopefully he is back soon for training camp, a plays of the preseason, and we could be confident he's over it. Otherwise, you know, I've, I, I've had a rule over the last couple of years. I, I try not to buy the injury dip. So if a guy is going into the season and he's dropping an ADP because he's currently dealing with an injury, 
just kind of go with someone who's maybe not dealing with an injury. Um, so I'm really sad at this because you you know I've this yeah. has just been a bad stretch. I was up on Acres, mm -hmm. Michael Thomas, yep. Curtis Samuel. These guys are all going down, man. So yeah, you've uh, got a curse right I, now. I tweeted this Probably out because you're so nasty. Just oh, it's Mr. so nasty. nasty, nasty man. Um, but someone please hide Robbie Anderson <laughs> because I would like to draft one of these guys I like this year. If you're new to fantasy football and you know still struggle with some of these terms like the pup list, what does that mean? There, we do have a new article up on the website. Our injury expert Matthew Betts wrote it up. It talks about what is the pup list. Uh, other injury designations. So just, you know, a nice thing to get yourself uh, apprised of, of that verbiage and learn. Bookmark it, too, because what, what's going to happen is later someone's going to have some unique designation. could be like, oh, what does that mean? Yeah. And then the answers are there for you. The New York Jets, Jason. The New York Jets, at least at the time of this recording, maybe it'll be because uh, we're recording, you know, a little bit early. Maybe they'll have it figured out by tomorrow. But we aren't going to miss our chance to take another pot shot at the New York oh, Jets. Oh, no, we're professionals. There is one first-round pick that is not signed to their NFL team, and that is the number two overall pick. Franchise quarterback Zach Wilson is not at training camp because they didn't have enough time, apparently, between the draft and now oh, to bro. figure out a contract. What is happening, and what are you doing? New York. I mean, it's it's look. Not it's only absurd. is it, it's absurd. Not only is this the number two overall pick, but it's a rookie who kind of needs to get in and have training camp. You know, we we talked about how we've kind of maybe not been respecting Zach Wilson's fantasy outlook because we're talking so much. The Jets about, are not either. Yeah, the, we're, we've talked so much about Trey Lance, adjusted Fields, and these guys right now are not the starters week one. He is the like yes. Zach Wilson is the starter week one, and he's not in camp, not signed buffoonery. But it's okay because they have um they have James Morgan and Mike White. Uh, oh yeah, at quarterback. Yeah, Mike White. Mike White, and don't forget about James Morgan. Now, long term, have you ever heard either of those names? Oh yeah. I mean, oh, me too. when, I, when a, I read the list I'm earlier, professional. So uh, Zach Wilson will be, will be there sooner than later. So it'll be much to do about nothing. It's just, what are you doing, man? What are you doing? And then the, the saints, they brought in some depth. Mm. Oh, I hit the button wrong. Hold on. Mediocre signing of the week. He's, he cut the lacrosse uh, resurgence. He cut it short. And Chris Hogan is back, baby. Chris Hogan <laughs> oh, on brother. the Saints. Well, uh, they they we said they'd sign someone. I yep. thought they'd aim a little higher. Yep. Maybe trade for a vet, but uh, yikes. Okay. And that was today's news and notes presented by Sleeper. Switch your league to the fastest growing fantasy platform today. We will be doing our mock draft on the Sleeper platform. Jason, do you have your rankings ready? I have my rankings right in front of me. Is your soul prepared? It is soups prepared and soups nasty. Let's do it. The Fantasy Footballers Mock Draft. My soul is prepared, Dr. Jones. Is yours. All right, we're doing a super flex mock draft draft that means that teams will be starting two quarterbacks and we do have a regular flex spot there as well this will be a true battle of supply and demand no longer can we simply wait for the quarterback position to drop and give us value you got to consider it immediately starting in the first round I randomly drew pick seven Jason randomly drew pick eight We'll snipe each other in every other round. That's all right, though, because that, uh, what was the last time? Team 11 or oh, whatever? Yeah. You were super pissed at <laughs> They team had 11. my number. So the draft has begun. Patrick Mahomes, number one. Makes sense. Superflex yep. League, guaranteed uh, top dog. Yep. Christian McCaffrey, Dalvin Cook, Alvin Kamara, Josh Allen, Johnny Taylor went to team number six. So that puts me on the clock. 
and I am in. I'm like I'm already upside down. I'm ar- <laughs> I'm already tilted. Uh, where do I go with the quarterback, Kyler Murray, my number one quarterback on the season? He is there. I can grab him. You know, I have about ten players between my first and my second pick, so it, it's nice. I'm in the middle. I can at least try and play the ADP game. Of uh, is a player going to drop to me or not? But I, I'm here to prove that even in a super flex league, you can still find value at the quarterback position. So I'm going to take my number one available running back, and I'm going with the Yeti. I will take Derrick Henry. Yeah, yeah. I was look. I mean, look at at the spot that I was at. There were two obvious options. One of them was Derrick Henry, and the other was indeed my number one quarterback. Now I am with you, Mike. Usually, and in, in fact, when I was preparing for this. I did not take my first quarterback in the first round. I You can absolutely wait. Uh, most of my mocks, I've been like a second and fourth round for my first two quarterbacks or even later, um, and I love the way that the teams have worked out there. However, at the eighth spot, you know, we talk about it. Patrick Mahomes, the number one pick. Uh, you know, I, I would probably go Christian McCaffrey if I had the one-on-one. Pat Mahomes is one or two usually. But Pat Mahomes is not my number one quarterback. Kyler Murray is my okay. number one quarterback. I think he's going to score the most points at this position. That's usually why you have them number one. Exactly. And so at the eight, I'm going to do something I almost never, ever do, even in a super flex, and draft a first-round quarterback. And we'll see how it turns out. All I'm right. scared. I was hoping genuinely that you took Kyler because – I'm so much more comfortable starting out with a couple Ooh, of running backs. Okay, so I'm uh, Marty, Marty, a little, little tilted getting my number one quarterback. Well, I think you're going to be happy with the running backs that came back. So you took Kyler, then we saw Saquon Barkley, who may or may not be ready to start the season. That's a little sketchy. Lamar Jackson, Travis Kelsey, and Dak Prescott round out the first round. Nicholas Chubb, Justin Herbert. Ezekiel Elliott and Devontae Adams. We saw the first wide receiver go right before your pick. You are up, Jason. You have a lot of top-notch running backs who are available, or if you want to secure that second quarterback and lock up that position, you could do that as <laughs> no, well. No, thank you. Um, I would like to not do that, especially okay. because I've got Kyler. I'm probably going to wait a couple of rounds before locking in my next quarterback unless someone uh, of obscene value drops. Right now... I, I feel pretty committed to getting another running back here. There are great wide receivers on the board, but there's also great running backs. And um, I know later in the draft rounds, you know, three, four, five, six, seven, I love the wide receivers in that range and usually hate the running backs. So I'm going to take a guy who the last two seasons has been a top five running back and has the projected increase of the passing game in uh, boo. Aaron Jones. Uh. Is that who you were hoping gets to you? It was. Sniped! It was. By uh, Mr. Nasty. <laughs> uh, I'm loving this. Yeah. I'm loving this, oh, yeah. this nasty talk. I mean, I, I've got like six nicknames, so we'll just, <laughs> we're add, just, just add, pile add them on. to it. Yeah. Someday, we'll just combine them all into one super nickname. Oh, yeah. The double stuffed it'll nasty be, shim. It, it'll be like, uh, like Game of Thrones. When, oh when yeah, Daenerys, yes. <laughs> Breaker of chains <laughs> introduces herself, and like people have to go take a potty break halfway through because it's just so yeah, long. I like it. Uh, all right, you took Aaron Jones. I am up, so I have Derrick Henry. Now my decisions would be let the quarterback. You got Russell Wilson. Aaron Rodgers is there. Those are two very high ranked quarterbacks for me as well. Jalen Hurts, but I'm gonna go for it, man. I'm going for it. As in, I'm putting off the quarterback position, and we're going to try and build a super team of running backs. I got Derrick Henry. I wish I would have gotten Aaron Jones because that means I would have pulled in my number four and number eight ranked running backs to start. I'm guessing that you, speaking of Game of Thrones, you're going to select your champion here? I am not because, oh. because I've, I have had this player ranked higher than Antonio Gibson the entire offseason, and I just talked about him by herself. I am taking the sure volume, the known thing, of rookie Najee Harris. Wow, 206 in a super flex league. That is higher than his normal ADP. Oh, man. But I, but I, but I get it. Oh, um, brother. I would have taken Austin Eckler, Antonio Gibson over him. But, uh, man, the board has come back pretty nicely for you. It has. It has put me in quite a pickle. <laughs> 
Uh, but before we uh, rattle off the picks that went and then my upcoming next pick, want to thank today's sponsor. Ladies and gentlemen, the Modern Finance Podcast, Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, NFTs, investing is an ever-changing landscape these days. The Modern Finance Podcast, hosted by Kevin Rose, it's a great place to listen about the latest trends in crypto, brush up on the fundamentals. Crypto isn't for everyone until you listen to Modern Finance. We have dabbled in the crypto world oh, yeah. ourselves. It's it, it's fun. Sometimes it's heartbreaking. So it's it's great to have resources where people really know what they are talking about. The Modern Finance, it's a crypto show for the novice, for the expert. Their mission is to demystify crypto without dumbing it down. They offer two shows on a single podcast feed, one weekly consensus episode that explores weekly news, distills it into digestible information, and then deeper interviews with individual crypto founders and NFT artists. I recommend you check out this podcast. It, you, Even if you are not investing in crypto, you should know what is happening. You should know what the possibilities are for it. The financial landscape is harder than ever to navigate, but you don't have to do it alone. Download and subscribe to Modern Finance wherever you listen to podcasts. That's Modern Finance wherever you listen. Don't be the last person on the next train out. Listen to Modern Finance and get ahead of the future of finance. And Foot Clan, this is the time of year you're preparing for your drafts mentally, and you got to prepare for your drafts physically. I'm not talking about working out. You know I'm not talking about that. Talk about getting your hardware, getting your championship. You're not talking about working out. No, I would never. Um, I'm talking about you know get a get a trophy, get your get your big old bling. You you seen these uh, Super Bowl rings? The I Buccaneers, have. the nice big monsters. They're, they're very shiny. They are very sparkly. Well, you get yourself a sparkly championship ring over at Fantasy Champs right now. They are giving away a free sixty dollar championship ring if you buy a trophy or a championship belt, rock your draft this year. You just go over there, add both to your cart, use the promo code free ring, and you're going to get a $60 championship ring. You can get like a, a trophy for your league and a ring for yourself. Yeah. Or a trophy for yourself and a ring for yourself. So yeah. use code free ring at fantasychamps.com. All right. So I took Najee Harris back to the draft. Tyree Kill, Stephon Diggs, Russell Wilson, Austin Eckler, Darren Waller, George Kittle. So the big tight ends finished off round two. Unfortunately, one of them did not fall to me. DeAndre Hopkins, DeAndre Swift, DK Metcalf, Justin Jefferson, uh, A.J. Brown, and Antonio Gibson. My champion almost fell back to me, which would have been a ridiculously tough decision to just to start triple running back in a super flex league. The amount of testosterone that it would take to to make that play Jason I don't know if I could handle it I, I consider myself you know, like the very bountiful hair mm -hmm. I mean like I'm a high T guy you mm. I'm a high no no mm. <laughs> no, no. Uh, you I, don't when you I, think about high T guys you don't you don't, don't think about the mm, fancy hit man no not too much <laughs> no I wouldn't say I wouldn't say you're first on my T list oh uh, but amazing. you do have a nice head of hair. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. So the the, the quarterbacks are Aaron Rodgers made it back to me somehow. To, uh, only one quarterback went in that run. Before it was the wide receiver run. O only one wide receiver for the first two rounds before our picks, and and then you had what eight uh, six wide receivers in that next little run. I think that this would be yeah, and and ADP is still trying to catch up to Aaron Rodgers, uh, who you know, is now back. And it feels like Rodgers should be an automatic selection for me. But I'm really struggling with, with the wide receiver run that happened. Calvin Ridley is still on the board. Calvin Ridley is my number four wide receiver heading into the season. He is a – I am extremely high on Calvin Ridley's uh, possibilities of finishing as the overall number one wide receiver on the year. Oh, I feel like that's – Whatever, I'm doing it. It's a bit of a hero play, but I'm going to take Calvin Ridley. So I have started Derrick Henry, Najee Harris, and Calvin Ridley in a super flex league. Who's high T now, Jason? Uh, I'm living on the edge, baby. No, I love it. I love it. You can easily start your first three rounds without a quarterback in a super flex league, and you'll be absolutely fine because – while your quarterbacks might be uh, a lower tier, you don't have the highest end 
quarterback one, you could still have a, a very good quarterback two by the time that comes around. And of course, it's, you're you're getting something of value for that. Derrick Henry, Najee Harris, and Calvin Ridley is a bomb start to a roster. So I like it. I was worried about Calvin Ridley because I did not want to go wide receiver here. I prefer loading up on more wide receivers uh, through those middle rounds and getting the higher end running backs yeah. and or quarterbacks in this format. But man, if Ridley was there for that's, me, I, that's what it made it. Calvin Ridley specifically is what made it so difficult because there was also a running back that I had my eye on that I'm sure you're probably drafting here. Well, there are a couple running backs that I really like. One guy that I, I'm absolutely in love with this year, I, uh, he's got a solid chance to be a my guy, is Clyde Edwards-Alaire. I, I absolutely think... That's who I was referring to. He is phenomenal. However, he's nowhere near as high in my rankings as another uh, another running back of mine, Joe Mixon. Uh, Joe Mixon, I think, is one of the very few, you know, what, four guys out there in the league that we know right now is a true bell cow. He's going to be out there on 70% of snaps. He's going to get all the running work. He's going to be involved in the passing game. So now I've got to make that decision in a super flex. Aaron Rodgers is sitting there yep. who is awesome, and putting Aaron Rodgers with Kyler would be great, or filling out my running backs and wide receivers – and I'm going to do what I think is best, which is filling out running backs and wide receivers. Um, you know, I've got someone like Tom Brady ahead of Aaron Rodgers in my rankings, um, and I can get him later. So okay. I'm going to be fine. So you took Joe that. Mixon. I I have Joe Mixon projected right now as my running back 13, and I he's one of those guys I just can't do it. It's when, when it comes time where I'm I'm slotted for Joe Mixon. I can't do it, and I know what I I know what I'm the possibilities of what I'm passing on the upside that I'm passing on, but I can't do it. Yeah, I mean Joe Mixon is a is a hard mental play because he has burned people before. He's not just someone that you know, like Clyde edwards alaire disappointed people last year, and so he's not super hyped. But Joe Mixon last year burned people, but I think people feel like he's burned them every single year. But it was like two years ago, he's the running back 13. Three years ago, he's the running but back But the two nine. years ago, if I'm remembering correctly, that's when he started the season. And we were getting legit questions in like week seven. Do I drop Joe Mixon? Yeah. Because he, he was – You're right. He wasn't just bad. He was a liability for your team because you're going to play Joe Mixon if he's on your roster – but then the second half of the and season, then, yeah. he went nuclear yes. and helped win everybody his, you know, their their leagues and played the entire season. So um, I I get the hesitancy with Joe Mixon, but I'm happy to have my number seven and number nine All right. running back. So I've got two top ten running backs, my number one quarterback, and here I'm sitting in the fourth round, questioning: Do I get my second quarterback? Guys that are on the board: Jalen Hurts, my aforementioned Tom Brady, Ryan Tannehill. Those those are the three that I would really like. Um, and I've got to I've got to ask myself, okay, let's assume because this is my longer wait, let's assume those three guys are gone. Would I be happy with the next tier of going to uh, a Kirk Cousins or a Carson Wentz or Matthew Stafford that level? I think I would be fine with that because I've got my quarterback one in tow. But it's really a matter of well, what am I getting for that? Am I is there a great running back or wide receiver or tight end uh, that's worth that? Right now, I don't I don't need the running back. I'd be looking at a Josh Jacobs. So a wide receiver. Keenan Allen, C.D. Lamb, who's just been more and more exciting. Amari Mike Cooper, Evans. Uh, Mike Evans, there's a lot of great options there. But I am going to actually play the uh, the tier-based game. I, I would be much more happy with the next tier of wide receivers than that tier of quarterback. So here I am, first and fourth round. I'm going to draft my number five quarterback, Tom Brady. Not play, mm. not play, I'm not playing around here. I'm not playing around either. I have. Uh, I thought you were going to take the the quarterback that I wanted to draft, but then I forgot we have just such a difference of opinion on Tom Brady. I like Tom Brady as a as a QB one, but I'm taking the upside of the uh, the young man with the legs. I will take Jalen Hurts, starting quarterback for the Philadelphia Eagles, even though Zach Ertz reported. <laughs> now you're still going to rely okay. on that quarterback. Zach Ertz. I know th I know this is a football show. Zach Ertz showed up to training camp looking 
like a Slim Shady clone. He looking like Mike Wright, his freshman year of high school, rocking that bleached blonde hair that everybody had, except now he's doing it as a grown man. What are your thoughts on Zach Ertz? When you saw the hair, did you adjust the rankings up or down? Well, I was like, what's Guy Fieri doing at the <laughs> Eagles camp? I didn't <laughs> I didn't really understand at first. Uh, I was like, oh, maybe they're doing a cookout. Is there a, is there a driver, a diner, a drive-in, or a dive here? <laughs> right. Um, and I think it's a dive. So, uh, yeah, he, he looks patently ridiculous. I mean, it, he's trying to blend in and say, hey, other fellow young kids, I'm here to play football. But um, if you haven't seen, Google it. It's fun. It's it's a good time. All right, so I took Jalen Hurts, David Montgomery, Josh Jacobs, Matthew Stafford, Keenan Allen, Mike Evans, and Daryl Henderson. Then we open up the fifth round with Miles Sanders, Trevor Lawrence, CeeDee Lamb, Chris Carson, Mark Andrews, and Ryan Tannehill. Well, I was I was hoping that Ryan Tannehill would drop to me oh, yeah. and make my pick very easy that I can – get into the fourth and fifth round and still end up with two of my top 12 guys. So the higher remaining quarterbacks at this point, Matt Ryan, he is lower in my projections, but it's interesting to have Calvin Ridley and Matt Ryan have that stack be able to go off every single week. Baker, Kirk Cousins, Carson Wentz, Justin Fields is there as he, uh, but we still don't know if he's the starter. Justin Fields right now, just as an aside, as we've talked about, our last pick in the draft, I like taking the shot on one of these rookie court, super Trey mobile Lance. rookie quarterbacks like Trey Lance and Justin Fields. At least at this very point in time, it feels like Justin Fields is the more likely guy that, to start week one. Uh, but I don't know if you saw the verbiage uh, when when they were talking, in Shanahan's talking about Garoppolo versus Trey Lance. Mm -hmm. and he said, there isn't a competition, quarterback competition right now. Yeah. Now, uh, do, do you read? I don't. Are you, are you putting on your sleuth detective cap going into that That no. like I am? No, I'm not. I think oh. when you say there's not a, a quarterback competition right now, you're saying that it's that Garoppolo is the guy. You're saying, look, he's a starter and you should trade for him. He is definitely our starter and someone come make an offer. Uh, he's so much better and please take him off my <laughs> roster. So you are reading into well, it. Well, I, I do think. I mean, right now I have Jimmy Garoppolo statted out for the entirety of the season. Um, I have been uh, on record saying that I think they'll. I, I think Garoppolo will not be on this roster by week one, and that's looking less and less likely as they go into as they go into camp. But uh, I figure some quarterback injury or something could happen. Um, so th that's where I'm at. I, I think Garoppolo is going to be the starter if he's on the roster. That's the part I question. Wide receivers available for me right now will be Chris Godwin, Amari Cooper, DJ Moore, Julio, uh, Kenny Galladay, who I, st I still like. Uh, I like Kenny Galladay a lot more than the the consensus. If I'm taking a wide, re he wide receiver. He should really be a my guy. Kenny Galladay? Yeah, because he's – We he approaching is, that? He is a your guy. Like I, like, I think Andy and I have left him for dead somehow. Yeah. And you are – Saying no, no, no! I got you, Kenny. Get on my back, and I'm gonna well, he's keep just, you up he's in so this smooth. ADP. Where, where, where are we at? Yeah. Oh, Kenny G, out there running smooth routes. He has given us some smooth training camp footage. I don't know if you've been. Checking I have not that seen out. any training camp footage. Of Kenny <sighs> so G. many touchdowns when there's no defense on the field. Oh man! So many touchdowns. Uh, quarterbacks again. I, I, I guess I already ran through those. Ah. Uh, and then at running back, I guess we'll we'll check it out just in case. I don't really have to do that with Henry and Harris, but ETN, Kareem Hunt, Miles Gaskin, Davis, that's the tier of, of running back that we are in. Oh, man, I really wish Ryan Tannehill had dropped to me. This is why I drafted Tom Brady, because Tom Brady, Dang it, man. Ryan Tannehill, and Jalen Hurts, I, I felt like I really wanted one of those three, and I'm happy to know that they would not have gotten back. I played the game – and I lost by one pick. That feels bad. But you're still fine. At yeah, I'm still fine. And I'm going to take DJ Moore. Okay. He, he's my wide receiver 14 right now. I get the all the touchdown talk for DJ Moore. But what if? What if DJ Moore hits the seven-plus touchdown range? He's going to be elite. Yeah, no, I, 
I like DJ Moore. He was in consideration when I was looking and I was sitting there on the clock. Um, I, I don't have a wide receiver yet or didn't. Um, I had Kyler Murray and Tom Brady to go along with Aaron Jones and Joe Mixon. Love that core of my team. Now I need a wide receiver, and I'm going to take Amari Cooper. And I know earlier this episode I said, you know, I don't buy the injury dip. And I, I That's don't. That's why I didn't take Cooper. Right, and it makes sense. Um, I don't feel like I'm buying the injury dip because this is a mock draft in July. And so I fully expect him to be back before we are uh, doing real before drafts, time. you know, the third week of August. And if he's back, then I will have no problem having him be my one. If he is, you know, if my draft day comes around and he's not out yet in August, then I will probably just let someone else take him and, and I'll probably be grabbing CeeDee Lamb pretty high. Amari uh, Cooper, TJ Hawkinson, Jamar Chase, Julio Jones, Chris Godwin round out the fifth round. Kareem Hunt, Travis Etienne, Adam Thielen, and Matt Ryan went right before you, Jason. So you are back up. Your team is Kyler, Aaron Jones, Joe Mixon, Tom Brady, Amari Cooper. And a reminder, this is a super flex and a regular flex league, so you do have to fill that extra flex spot. And And as Brooks is reminding us, if if the if you got to smash that emergency button, it is a super flex. That doesn't mean you have to put a quarterback in there. More often than not, you will be. But just a reminder that yeah, you don't have, you don't have to you don't put have a quarterback to in win. There. You don't have to try <laughs> to like win matchups or do any. You you have the freedom to put um, Jared Goff in there. You know, um, yeah, or uh, Blake Portals. You well, can you do whatever play, you want. You can't play Blake in there. He got cut. I mean, a super flex is a two quarterback league. All right. I realize that in a pinch, break glass in emergency type of situation, sure, but we want you to win. All right, so play so you're like, up, Jay. What are you looking at? Um, I think I'm still looking at wide receiver here because I'm I'm so happy with my running backs and quarterbacks. Um, and I've got the question mark in um in Amari Cooper. So then it's like, oh man, what day of the week is today? Is, is right now it is we are recording on a Wednesday. Okay. They're listening on a Thursday. Oh no. You that's two days. Because I don't know between Cooper Cup and Robert Woods. Oh, okay. What day what of the week saying. is it? And it's it's both of those days. I I have like I go back and forth on these guys so much. Um I, I'm gonna stick to my rankings and I'm gonna go with Robert Woods, who, because of my Amari Cooper risk, uh, Woods definitely feels like the safer option. But I will say this on Cooper Cup. I am rising a little bit on Cup recently because of Stafford. I, I, I think we've got to realize that Sean McVay nerfed this offense, uh, necessarily so, to Jared Goff. He made the offense work for what he could do, and he wasn't great airing it out down the field that much lately. He, he got a little bit more gun shy, especially as the interior of the offensive line eroded and guys just started coming up the middle the 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 deeper passes I think Cooper Cup he can you know just eat that zone away on those deep passes I think Stafford's gonna find him a lot but I took Woods so I, I am now in another predicament so I'm looking let's look at the draft board here uh six teams are between me and my next pick one of the two of those teams or I'm I'm, I'm sorry I miscounted four of those teams have one quarterback, one team already has two, and team three over here has no quarterbacks. Sounds like someone should take a quarterback. It does sound like that because the tier of wide receivers are there, – there's a, there's a good chunk here where I see them all pretty similar except for Kenny Galladay is still here. He's still smooth. And another guy who feels like he is – now become in my guy contention as well. That's Tyler Lockett. Who, oh yeah, who, oh yeah, baby. Who I think is being overlooked. I, I am, I am on the side of you. Sh you need to pay attention to the consistency. That was a problem. Like I'm not throwing that out the window. I think that was a massive problem last year. But the upside of what he can do, the fact that. He had more targets than DK Metcalf last year, and DK Metcalf in a in a non super flex league is a second round pick, and a guy who was right essentially right there with him production wise 
is a fifth and a sixth round pick at the wide receiver position. I think that that's a. I hope you that's take too him. drastic. I hope you take him because he he was obviously my guy last year. Finished as a as the wide receiver nine, which is phenomenal. But everybody's disappointed because it was so inconsistent. I've never seen a player with a hundred receptions. Yes, that was inconsistent. And if you had to bet on one of those things changing, I would bet that it would be the consistency that would change, not the target volume. So I I I, I personally love that. But you are in a pickle here with. Um, whether or not you take the quarterback gamble, I am. I am. I'm taking the gamble, Jason. I'm going Kenny Galladay. I'm. I'm sticking with that. Miles Gaskin, Brandon Ayuk, Deontay Johnson, Tyler Lockett. Gamble uh, paid off. Yeah, Javante Williams, James Robinson. That was the sixth round. We start the seventh with Cooper Cup, Baker Mayfield, Mike Davis, T. Higgins, Chase Edmonds. Which that's a at this point that's a great pick. And then Team Six is taking the chance on Justin Fields. So, two quarterbacks went Baker, Justin Fields. Now, if I knew right now that – if we knew today that Justin Fields was the starter, I would have definitely taken him uh, earlier. So, at this point, you're you know kind of taking that gamble. However – I don't think there's any chance he starts week one. Uh, that's kind of where I am. Uh, I, I think there is, but it's, you know, like 10 to 20% or something. It's It's lower – that I don't want to take the the chance right now. But we were just highlighting this Minnesota quarterback and saying how he is often overlooked. But if you're in a super flex, he's a fantastic quarterback too. So this crew with Kirk Cousins, I am feeling I'm feeling good, Jason. I've got let me run it down. I got Derrick Henry, Najee Harris, Calvin Ridley, DJ Moore, and Kenny Galladay. And then my quarterbacks right now are Jalen Hurts and Kirk Cousins. Yeah, uh, I, I like that roster. I've got Kyler Murray and Tom Brady at quarterback, Aaron Jones, Joe Mixon at running back, and Amari Cooper and Robert Woods at wide receiver. I'm pretty stoked about my team as well. Um, I, I'm, I'm looking right now at a couple of players, and at this point in the draft, there are a handful of players that I find myself taking every single time. I, I pretty much end up with very, very similar players because I think they are of value at this point in the draft. They're worth the risk. So, for instance, another round from now, a Melvin Gordon, a Raheem Mostert, those are two guys that Ooh. I'm not in love with them. You're still taking Melvin? In the eighth round, I am still taking Melvin. I think there is a world where, um, you know, this is a team built for the future. They're, uh, they're unbelievable. Next year, they get a quarterback. This is going to be a great team. Run Melvin Gordon into the ground. He's on a contract year basis. Save Javante Williams for the future. Um, I, I'm not. I mean, I've got. You know, I, I'm not like pining for Melvin Gordon. But as an eighth round, Sounds a ninth like round, it. eighth round, ninth round pick. Um, I again, I'd rather have Raheem Mostert um, because I think he is the starter. Whereas I think Melvin Gordon, it seems like he's going to be the backup. Um, Melvin but, Gordon is off my draft board. There's no round in which you'll draft him. The tenth plus. Okay, but, sounds like he's not off your but draft board. He is. It, it, in terms of practicality of me actually drafting Melvin Gordon, where he will, and in a range that he will go, he's off my board. I sure. won't be getting. That's fine. Um, but that, uh, as I said, that's another round from now. The guy that I tend to grab over and over and over and over, and you know, I I, I just believe in the talent a ton. Is Cortland, oh. is Cortland Sutton. Okay. Um, I, I think that, you know, ironically, a, a teammate there. I say I, I really like the team. Teddy Bridgewater is not the best in the world, but, you know, Robbie Anderson had over 1,000 yards last year. DJ Moore had over 1,000 yards last year, and I'm not sure that either of them are half as talented as Cortland Sutton. So DJ Moore is as talented. DJ but, Moore is great, yes. But Cortland Sutton, we forget how good he was prior to being injured, and, uh, you know, I, I expect when he comes back to – to just dominate. Now, neither one of us have grabbed a tight end here. And we're in the tight end kind of, you know, the graveyard area where if I miss out on Hawkinson and Mark Andrews in that sixth round area, which they almost never get to the sixth, so I don't grab them, but that's mm -hmm. what I need to happen for me to grab them. Now I punt and I wait for some of the guys we like. You're getting your Rams super stack here? Uh, my Rams super stack with Higby, you're saying? Yeah, yeah but I'll, I'll wait a while on tight end. I just okay. wanted to bring it up for the listeners let them know I don't like taking these seventh eighth ninth round tight ends like there's there's a handful of guys I'm willing to stream to start the season um and uh that's what I do if I don't grab one of those top guys 
So now I'm looking at uh, running backs. Oh, Raheem Mostert did go. He went right after me. And so did Melvin Gordon. Yeah, so, that's so you took Cortland Sutton, Raheem Mostert, Noah Fant, Chase Claypool, who would have uh, – I, I wish he would have fallen to me in the eighth. Odell Beckham, Devontae Smith, Melvin Gordon, DJ Chark, Carson Wentz. So you, you played a game and you highlighted two running backs – and they're both gone. How does that make you feel? Uh, it makes me feel fine because we're in the eighth or ninth round. Like uh, these aren't guys I'm I'd prefer if you felt for. bad. I I know. And and if I had gambled in the second or third round and lost, I would feel much much worse. Um, so from here on out, there's a wide receiver on the board I am madly in love with. I don't think he gets back to me now. If you draft him here. What are the chances that by next week he is on the IR? Oh, 75%. Um, so I'm sorry to do this to you, Robbie, <laughs> but I really do believe in Robbie Anderson's talent. Had 136 targets last year, over 1,000 yards. He just didn't get the touchdowns. And now he's bringing, you know, Curtis Samuel is gone and his old quarterback is in. So I think Robbie Anderson is, he is my favorite late round wide receiver value this year. Um, so I'm going to go four wide receivers in a row. Amari Cooper, Robert Woods, Cortland Sutton, Robbie Anderson. I like my receiving core to go with my great quarterbacks and running backs. Okay. I am looking at, I will need a third quarterback, but I'm, I'm not going to take him right here. Uh, I'm currently looking at the running back position. My eye would be on Ronald Jones, Trey Sermon. It take, it take the chance, call the shot that Trey Sermon actually ends up being the, the day one starter or the starter sooner than later. Uh, Michael Carter, the presumed 1A for the New York Jets. or uh, But I'm going to go with this player who I have have been rising on. I'm taking Damian Harris, the New England Patriots. I understand that the the upside is perceived to be capped with, uh, with Cam Newton being a goal line vulture. But in the eighth round, Damian Harris is the starting running back. And uh, uh, I'm going to highlight Damian Harris, uh, I think, next in an upcoming show but essentially like how interesting it was that Rex Burkhead was a problem for Damian Harris which totally makes sense because he is an actual versatile running back uh that he he can run or he could be a pass catcher for the Patriots and as soon as Rex Burkhead got hurt last year you saw a dramatic rise in snaps for Damian Harris as you have him and you have James uh uh James White, like their roles are secured. And I think that Sony Michelle is less of a threat to Damian than Rex Burkhead was last year. So yeah. I like I like getting a starting running back here in the eighth. He is a starting running back. You can plug him in your lineup and get eight points whenever you need. I just feel like he doesn't catch the ball and he's not gonna get touchdowns while Cam's the quarterback. So that that's those are the reasons I'm like off of Damian Harris, but I think you and Andy are both more on the value of Damian Harris as a starter in the eighth round. Yep. Dallas Goddard went to a Trey Sermon, Trey Lance, Juju, and then Deshaun Watson, who is currently playing defense for the Houston Texans in their training camp. I don't know what they're doing. Jerry Judy, Debo Samuel, Daniel Jones, Ronald Jones, Jalen Waddell, and LaVisca Chenault. That's how it went between my two picks. So, interesting – Let's see. I'd, so I'm going to look over here at tight end. Mike Kosicki, Logan Thomas. Oh, okay. Robert Tunyon is there. Yeah. That's not a – no, I'm just going to make it easy for myself. I'm going to take Robert Tunyon there. Uh, with Aaron Rodgers being back, Tunyon is a – he is, to me, a pretty big gamble at the tight end position to be that efficient. But, again, I'll repeat myself. If you're going late round, you want a quarterback who's going to throw a ton of touchdowns and now that Aaron Rodgers is back, I have locked that situation up. Absolutely. I, I uh, was on a mock draft podcast yesterday, and that was my late round grab. Uh, I took him over Tyler Higby, who's my usual late round grab, because uh, you know he was the tight end three, and we all expect it to regress. But it's not, it's not impossible for him to just become more and more involved in the passing game. He's still a young sure. tight end, and he's tied to Aaron Rodgers. So I, I don't mind Randall that Cobb there. could cause a problem for Robert Tunyon in terms of volume absolutely uh, in terms of him leveling up and taking yes. a step up in targets I agree um so for everyone listening and you're you're in a super flex league you want to leave with three quarterbacks 
um, the bye weeks, injuries, problems, and there, there's a finite resource. There's only 32 starters and then a couple of backups you know are going to see the field. Um, so not every team can get three. Uh, my favorite three quarterbacks to target late for that third are Ryan Fitzpatrick, Derek Carr, and Ben Roethlisberger, guys that are not fought over. These are right. people aren't scrapping and clawing. So I think I and can. And they will all three be very useful. Yeah. Yeah. And I, so I think I can play the game with all three of them still there. I doubt all three go. Um, and I'm going to look at a different position. I still only have two running backs. So that's where I think I need to look that direction. And I'm between the, the youthful upside of a Michael Carter, who we saw uh, coming out of camp. He, he got the first team reps, but I'm not in love with that offense. Or you have James Conner, uh, elder statesman. I realize he's the second running back being drafted from his team, but Kenyon Drake was, you know, the, the the running back fourteen last year. But he cost you a first rounder in the ninth round. I think a good safety piece who I expect to get a lot of touchdowns on the ground. I will I will take okay. James Conner in the ninth. Jason selects James Conner. We go Mike Gesicki, Logan Thomas, Zach Wilson, Leonard Fournette for the ninth round. The tenth starts with David Johnson, Tyler Boyd, Will Fuller, and Curtis Samuel. Will Fuller in the tenth is incredible value. I love that pick. I wish he would have dropped to me, but Curtis Samuel and ah, his groin yeah. did not drop to you, which I'm thrilled about because that means I can't take him, <laughs> and I I <laughs> would and, and I him. would really like to. Um, so I'm looking at my team here. I, I'm looking at that third quarterback. Now that I've shored up my running back, I'm happy with uh, wide receiver. So it's between, do I take a third quarterback or do I take my starting tight end at tight end? There's Tyler Higby. Um, and then uh, you've got the Troutmans and yes. the Blake Jarwin. Oh uh, yes. I mean, guys that I, you call, call, they I know. call you nasty. Yeah. Talking nasty to me right now. Get nasty <laughs> up in here. Um, but I I don't believe in them quite as much as Higby, so I'm gonna take I'm I'm gonna I think it's a solid pick. Take a guy that I've got as a top ten tight end who I, we've seen on the field has top five upside and uh, hope that that he's as involved as he was when Gerald Everett was off the field last time. And my next selection is incredibly easy. I'm taking Michael Pittman from the Indianapolis Colts. He has been rapidly. Rising up my draft board, he is... He's another one of your guys. He is very close to my guy contention. Uh, Double-digit rounds for the first patch, pass catcher for the Colts, a second-round player, his a second-year second-round player. I think that the sky is the limit. Athletic profile. like every All the boxes are checked for there for for Michael Pittman. The big, a bigger question would be Carson Wentz. Does he have anything left? And you guys keep trying to convince me that he does. For fantasy, yes. <laughs> so I'll buy in. Uh, so I'm, I got Michael Pittman. Very happy about that. After that, Michael Carter, Zach Moss, Brandon Cooks, Jarvis Landry, Gronk, and Irv Smith round out the 10th. Kenyon Drake, Antonio Brown, Hunter Henry, Gus Edwards, Marquise Hollywood Brown, and A.J. Dillon. A.J. Dillon would have been would have made me very happy if I were able to grab him right here. But this is and, a family podcast, so we didn't want it to get – not safe for work. Right, yes. And have A.J. Dillon fall to you. and You are you are correct. Uh, and Hollywood Brown, Jason, what, who was just talking about him? Uh, that was... was uh, it, it was Mark Andrews? It was. I believe it was Mark Andrews who was saying he is going to have a shock the world season. Um, and I, man, would I love that because I, I was wholly convinced that he is... His talent is completely elite on the NFL level like he is not good he's great um and he did show enough flashes where I I believe that the problem is the passing game is so small that for fantasy purposes I'm not sure that can happen and now you have Rashad Bateman come into town and you go okay well that's even more to eat into the pie so Marquise Brown is being left for dead but there is still clearly a path for him yes. to emerge he was great the second half of last year that was pretty touchdown dependent but he still got it done, and uh, I saw people talking about it on Twitter. Marquise has never had an actual off season. Like right. coming out of the draft, he had the the foot problem, and then you had COVID last year. So I don't think we should bury him just yet. 
Uh, so I, I'm not overly excited. I'm definitely not caping and touting for Marquise Brown, but I, I'm with Jason. Let's let's not bury him just yet. I am up. I get my my pick of the bunch for my quarterback three. I wish I could confidently take one of the Saints quarterbacks here because that would be an easy selection for me, either Taysom or Jameis. So I will simply – If it was easy, they wouldn't be here. That is true, which if you're drafting – honestly, if you're drafting right now – It's a great pick. I would it, – it, we have three more picks left. If you wanted to take both of those quarterbacks this late in your draft – That's – that is I'm, – I'm, I'm, I'm fully on board that with that. That is a great strategy because all that lets you do is drop a clear – player yes. you, you are guaranteeing an actual top fantasy producer at quarterback and then you get a drop for waivers in week one uh, I've got no problems with uh, versus versus clogging your roster with uh, you know some random you know okay great I've got T.Y. Hilton on my bench right but because I don't know and uh, I've just uh, laid out that possible strategy there's no way Jason's gonna allow it to happen so I will just take Ryan Fitzpatrick. Uh, yeah. Sexiest so, quarterback in the league. Absolutely. Uh, so I, I talked earlier, Derek Carr, Ben Roethlisberger. Uh, ben Roethlisberger would <laughs> – oh, my goodness. I've never had a problem saying his name, but Ben Roethlisberger. Um, he would be my pick here. But because of Robbie Anderson, I am fine playing another round of oh. gambling and waiting if, if Sam Darnold – Gets to okay, me. Get that. Um, get that elite Sam Darnold. The stack. elite stack, baby. Um, so I'm I'm fine with that. Uh, at running back, I think I could use a little bit more depth. I've only got Aaron Jones, Joe Mixon, and James Conner. Um, the problem is there's not a great running yeah, back to grab. I, I definitely need running back depth, but I there's no one to take. I mean, I I still think Jamal Williams will be involved, but involved. On the Packers, he was meh for fantasy involved on the Lions. I just don't see a path. So this is where I'm I'm gonna take player over team need because I, I just don't think it's you know, there's there's a guy like Mike Williams that I think I could grab and be you know, ec ecstatic with. He could really level up with the year two of Justin Herbert. Um, and I'll take someone like that over a, a could be nothing a uh, probably nothing at running back so all right so I you took, took you took mike williams then it went Corey davis naheem hines michael gallup tony pollard devin singletary evan ingram darnell mooney Devonte parker and jason you are back up we are almost done so i have roethlisberger well ahead of darnold in my rankings um i expect him to have a better season but this is my third quarterback and i hope i'm not playing men roethlisberger other than a bye week here or a bye week there. So I'm going to take the shot at Darnold being, you know, past Adam Gase in the new offense. Uh, he's still a young guy and, and actually someone that could maybe level his way up into my roster versus just an injury uh, safety blanket. And like I said, I do need some running back depth. And look, in fantasy football, it's okay every once in a while to take a bite of the humble pie, leave the possibility that your projection for a player is a bit off base. And I got Ryan Fitzpatrick. I might mm. as well get a little uh, little smooches, might get a little stack to the running back position, leave the door open for the possibility that J.D. McKissick still is as heavily Ridiculous, involved. Mike. I know. Ridiculous. It's, it's Antonio I, Gibson's season. I don't buy into it personally. But that's what I'm saying. Of I'm leaving the door open for that, and if that ends up being what the what the Washington Football Team goes with, then I got a steal of J.D. McKissick here at the back of or in the middle of the twelfth round. <laughs> well done, Brooks. All right, Rashad Bateman, Elijah Moore, Adam Troutman. Looks like Team Four should log out because they just won the draft. Cole Komet, Russell Gage, Marvin Jones. Then in the final round, Henry Ruggs, T.Y. Hilton, Jamal Williams, Jared Cuke. Did you see uh, uh, John, I think it was John who named. Oh, yeah, the Boston. The Boston T.E. party. Oh, man, it's so good. How, what, 
how did we not if you're in a deep league but how did we fail on that and name? you want to draft both tight ends from the patriots uh, hunter henry and john who just so you can name just say okay I was like, i'm not doing i'm not in on either of those guys i mean you know sometimes a name has to come first you know um the boston te party oh it's good <laughs> it's it's really really solid uh okay i'm looking through the list we are just at the point of the draft where I mean, which which sleeper do I want to highlight on uh, <laughs> with this last pick? And I honestly, I don't know. Let me run through my team here. I got Derrick Henry, Najee Harris, Damian Harris, and J.D. McKissick at the running back position. Calvin Ridley, D.J. Moore, Kenny Galladay, and Michael Pittman at wide receiver. Jalen Hurts, Kirk Cousins, and Ryan Fitzpatrick are my quarterbacks. What you know, decently balanced here. So, looking at the wide receivers, John Brown, Jalen Rager, uh, McCole Hardman was getting a little bit of uh, camp buzz. Did you read that one, Jay? I, I hadn't read that, but it, it it makes sense. Sammy Watkins out of there, and there's a few targets up for grabs. He's a young guy that seemed very NFL immature, so if he matures and gets a little bit more trust i don't know if you know this but zach Ertz is still available oh the the new blonde bombshell the blonde bombshell zone. the new one uh but it's the last pick in the draft so i'm gonna grab someone that i'll know immediately week one if this player has any sort of value i will take tevin coleman, tevin coleman. from the new york jets who may still be the starter for the first couple and weeks. i'm gonna grab a running back as well i, I brought up jamal williams earlier a guy who's kind of going to be involved a little bit on a bad team why why take him when i could take latavius murray someone who okay. will be involved on a good offense i um, think that's a solid pick latavius is i mean i no, like your pick more than mine no <laughs> Nobody wants him because, you know, you feel like the upside isn't there. Although, if Alvin Kamara got injured, Latavius would have to really Well, and have... on top of that, with Michael Thomas being out for at least six weeks. You could have Latavius getting more run as they move Kamara into the slot by well, necessity. Well, I'm saying, leave that door open. What if this team starts out the first half of the year and they're very run heavy? Yeah. I mean, leave the door open for that. A so, big, my team ends yeah, up... Yeah, read it off. Kyler Murray, Tom Brady, and Sam Darnold at quarterback. At running back, I've got Aaron and Jones, Joe Mixon, James Conner, and Latavius Murray. At wide receiver, Amari Cooper, Robert Woods, Cortland Sutton, Robbie Anderson, and Mike Williams. Oh, and Tyler Higby. At my quarterback position, I have Jalen Hurts, Kirk Cousins, and Ryan Fitzpatrick. Derek Henry, Najee Harris, Damien Harris, and J.D. McKissick, and Tevin Coleman as my running backs wide receiver calvin ridley it's not good when you start reading a guy's name and you like you, you start laughing at your pick yeah. it's, it's, not, it's not the best place to be in it's a lot of times the day after your league results your draft results are right. imported you make a waiver move <laughs> you go to the waiver wire and you go okay i I'm didn't, gonna, I I'm didn't want to make everyone wait so i made a pick and it was a bad pick Calvin Ridley, DJ Moore, Kenny Galladay, and Michael Pittman at the wide receiver position. Shout out to Sleeper, the Sleeper app, the Sleeper platform. Not only are they breaking news to you every day, but they are the fastest growing fantasy platform on the planet. And this is where we play the Megala Bowl League, the, yes. the biggest fantasy football league in the world that we hope you participate in come August. Details, we'll, we'll start talking about it in the mid-August. Um, pay attention this upcoming week as we announce another league that will be important. Ooh, that's a good tease. Yeah. That's going to do it for today's show for Jason the Nasty One. <laughs> so nasty. I am Mike the Fantasy Hitman, right? We have a show on Saturday, and then next week it's five shows forever. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.